Hi, my name is Sarah Elliott, and I'm going to be pre presenting on the Betancourt and Lopez article, Cultural Ethnicity and Race in Psychology. And we're going to be examining cross-cultural psychology. To begin, the most important thing is to defi define culture. This becomes the cornerstone of attempting to further the study of psychology. If we can't define what culture is, then how do we study what it is? Um, obviously, that's an important thing to do because by defining a term um, very specifically, then we can begin to study it. Unfortunately, when we come to the term culture, it has many different connotations. If I were to ask anybody in the class, what does culture mean to you, I'm sure we would all have a very different answer. I know it attempts to be very broad in its explanation, but we need to try to find, um, try to define it a little bit better because then we're able to actually measurably study it. So we start to look at elements of culture, um, which then opens up another can of worms as far as definitions go. Um, oftentimes researchers um, will be using, and those of us who use the common language, we're using culture and race interchangeably. And it doesn't really take into account the differences and similar similarities that researchers are using to define those things. So we may start to look at um, another term, obviously, ethnicity and race. So this is a word that is often used, um, ethnicity is often used in conjunction with race and culture, and often refers to a person's heritage or nas nationality, as well as their language. Um, the important difference um, is explained in the article really well. Um, it says, although cultural background can be a determinant of ethnic identity or affiliation, being part of an ethnic group can also determine culture. So the, these these terms and definitions that we start to throw around unfortunately can get very muddled and so then attempting to define it and to study it we have to start breaking it down on an even further level so we start to look at a definition of race we start to look at a, the definition of ethnicity um, and then again what do they, they have they come with their own set of connotations what do these terms mean to you how do we define them and why should we define them? And the important part of that is the why. We should define these terms because if we're going to be able to make cross-cultural psychology a, a truly studied field, we have to have measurable outcomes. And the only way we can do that is by defining the terms that we're using, um, especially finding a root commonality um, so that we can understand the broader implications. Um, because then we can look at how it falls into a cultural aspect, such as we look at a racial aspect or we look at an ethnicity um, aspect and find out how that falls into the idea of culture. So we talk about cross-cultural psychology. What does that really mean? Um, we have mainstream psychology, which is what is sort of everybody thinks of. Um, when we're looking at that, uh, at the field of psychology, we're looking at things like behavior and um, trends across development and things like that. Um, whereas cross-cultural psychology, we're really, at what it says, we're looking across instead of on a lineated um, field. So we're looking at the cross-cultural studies. Um, it's really important because they use different approaches. And so the article that I was reading, Betancourt and Lopez, believe that there are two methods to approaching a cross-cultural and mainstream confluence of psychology. So that's looking at a bottom-up approach, which I talk about here. And that is um, taking a look at, pardon me, um, examining many aspects of a culture, finding a theme, and then eventually coming up with a theory or they look at it top down, which starts with a theory and then attempts to incorporate the aspects of culture into that theory, um, which are both important ways to look at studying this um, this genre, I should say, I guess, um, of psychology. Um, is there crossover between mainstream psychology and cross-cultural psychology? Absolutely. I think there should be crossover. There has to be um, crossover, and we'll get into that in a little bit more detail in just a moment. Um, we have to also look at behavior. We can't just look at someone's nationality, their background, their race, where they come from, what they do. Um, we have to look at behavior because so much of, first of all, of mainstream psychology focuses on behavioral 
psychology, but also if we're looking at cultural cultural differences, the behavior is a huge part of it and how someone's brought up and their religion and their uh, morals and all those things that come into family dynamics as well. Um, anthropology, for many of you who know, this is uh, the study of people, essentially. Um, I'm glad that Betancourt and um, Lopez brought up anthropology. I think it was really important has a really important role when you're examining psychology. I think they have to go hand in hand. And um, I was really happy when I, I came across that in the article because um, it, it has to, when <laughs> you're studying people, you have to study um, psychology, you have to study the study of people um, as well if you hope to have a broader understanding of where that lies historically as well. Um, one topic that kept coming up when I was looking um, was ethnic minority research. And apparently um, this is facing a lot of the same issues as cross-cultural psychology as I was doing some further research. Um, because we um, are failing to look at um, some of the similarities in, um, in ethnic minority research, we're looking at a very specific group. And I think that we need to make sure that we bring it out on the broader scale um, because we're not looking at the underlying cultural and ethnic groups. And instead, we're making easy assumptions um, in research. And that's not an optimal way, obviously, of examining things because when you make assumptions, obviously, that destroys um, <laughs> credibility, essentially. Um, so that's what we were looking at with cross-cultural psychology, and when I was talking about defining terms like ethnicity and race and culture, it's really important to under have an understanding of that because um, when you start making assumptions, as I said, it becomes this, it opens up this whole can of worms and it, you lose all credibility scientifically. So what do you think are some of the assumptions we're making, and can we make these assumptions? Can we say that everybody from a certain country does this? Well... No, because then we have to examine, is everybody from this certain region in this country from this type of religious background? Then we start to start to maybe see some trends. But you can't assume that everybody that was raised in this, you know, we talk about especially nationality, we can't assume that everybody raised in this village in this country is going to have the same exact culture. There may be certain things that are similar, but there's also going to be very th things that are different because we start to look at fi family dynamics and the backgrounds of parents and things like that. So that is another thing that comes into play um, when we start talking about the similarities between ethnic minority research and cross-cultural psychology. Some of my criticisms um, uh, come stem from dated information. Um, so this article, for instance, was written in 1993, so that was 20 years ago. Has there been anything that's changed since then? Um, obviously, that's been almost 20 years. Uh, I believe that we've begun to look at culture differently than we once did, even 20 years prior. Uh, especially when you're looking at the United States, I feel that we're becoming a more culturally diverse country as the years go on. The implications of this is that our culture excuse me, will be much more difficult to define, and it'll become more tangled in general. Um, we start looking at immigration, and we look at different religions, and we look at different ways of bringing up families. We look at different sexual orientations and how that's affected, how family dynamics have changed. We're not looking at just the, the mother, father, 2.5 kids, etc. We're starting to see an influx of all sorts of different ways that family is defined and so this is only going to become more and more difficult. So I think some of the barriers facing cross-cultural psychology are self-evident. We are afraid that they're going to be a the, the the definitions that we're trying to define are or the terms that we're trying to define are going to be very difficult. Um, defining our own culture is going to be extremely difficult and in defining yourself. I mean how do you define yourself and what do you look at and when you do that? Um, so the cross-cultural psychology definitely has a, a huge mountain to climb, I would say. However, it's going to be incredibly important as we go forward um, because this is only going to become more and more important. When we start looking at um, the term of long-term care, for instance, this is going to be extremely important as we have people who are coming into these homes that are from very diverse backgrounds and then they're put in this home together and expected to not have quote-unquote behaviors, 
They're expected to get along with their peers. A lot of times in Medicaid facilities, nobody has their own private room, so they're having a roommate for maybe the first time in so many years. And what have they done? What's been their routine for their entire lives? So then you take the, that group or that cohort of people inside the home, and then you add on top of it the staff. So you have staff that's coming in from their own cultural background. And, you know, in the United States, a lot of times, for instance, in my area in Colorado, um, we have a lot of people from West Africa, um, from Ghana. Um, we also have some people from Ethiopia. And learning how those cultures bring their own set of um, their own set of background morals, their own set of ideas and ideals into the home, and how can we make that mesh, and how do we make sure that that's, um, you know, that everybody's needs are being met while still having these this very diverse cultural background that we're dealing with. Um, I used to work in a home that had a very large Korean population, and the Korean uh, population in that home were extremely different from say, the people that had grown up in Colorado their whole lives and were now in long-term care. It was a huge, huge difference. And so the importance of cross-cultural psychology is that we are able to study these differences so that we can then also find similarities, but also have a broader understanding of, of everyone's background so that we can provide the best care for our elders going forward. So I think this is a huge area um, to, that will continue to be explored. I think Betancourt and Lopez were clearly, um, not maybe not ahead of their time, but they were definitely on point when they were um, talking about the importance of studying this field. Uh, they definitely, it's going to be advancing the field of psychology as a whole. It has to, um, because they're, they're going to have to include cultural studies if they want, if, if, they, I use the, the capital T, they, want the field of psychology to expand and continue to grow. So that's the future. <laughs> Do we think it's necessary to continue the study of culture in relation to the field of psychology? Um, the article that I read certainly seems to think so, so and I absolutely agree with that. Um, what will that look like? And I, and I asked that and I put that to the class. What is it going to look like to study culture in relation to psychology? And what are the implications going to be and what is it going to look like? And that was the article I was referencing, but I read a lot of articles, <laughs> um, which I can provide as well. So thank you very much for listening, class.